Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And today, Bandit is feeling a bit agitated. So there might be some barking in the bark background. I'll keep it to a minimum. I'll try to edit out those parts and uh, re-record those parts. But we'll see what happens. He's just barking like crazy today. Is it a full moon? I haven't even checked. I'm recording this on November 5th. So today we're taking a look at this knife. This is the Harns Maverick comes in uh, three different colors of handle scale. You can get this black and blue G10 with a satin finish blade, or you can get just straight black G10 or straight blue G10, that same blue, with a black washed blade. Now, I would have liked this to be a stone wash blade, but it's a satin finish blade. Uh, actually, the black washes look great. What I'd really like is this black and blue handle with the black wash blade. I guess if I bought two knives, I could swap them around and maybe, you know, I could easily make one just by swapping out the handle scales, not the locking mechanism at all. It's hard to swap a blade from one knife to another because uh, on the liner locks, they've been adjusted to mate with each other. So that's not that easy. But yeah, I could just swap the handle scales. Uh, what we've got is a knife that is $41.99 US at White Mountain Knives. The blue with black, uh, the black wash blade is in stock. The other two are not in stock at this moment. You can hit the notify me button below any of them. And the more people that choose the notify me option, it tells the owner of White Mountain Knives that people want that knife restocked. So if you're waiting for a knife, definitely do fill out that notify me option on that page. But the blue with the black wash, that's a good looking knife. After discount, it's a little bit under 40, no, 38 Canadian dollars, which is, where did I put my paper? Which is right around 48 Canadian. So 48 Canadian dollars for this knife. We've got D2 steel on here and uh, having it shipped from White Mountain Knives. Generally, it gets through. I had one person talk to me this week. He sent me an email and he said a CBSA agent actually phoned him up and told him that a war spear that he had ordered from White Mountain Knives was illegal. And uh, at least he got personalized service. So that's really good. I've only had one knife ever stopped by White Mountain Knives. By, I've only had one knife from White Mountain Knives stopped by CBSA, and that was a Ganzo Flipper. Without any further to do or adieu, however people say that. I think it's adieu is how it was originally. I think it's from French, right? We're gonna go to the tabletop and we're gonna take a good close look at the Maverick. I'm sorry, Derek. It's over three inches in the blade. Try to poke myself. Yeah. Uh, one of my viewers, Derek, has been with the channel since I first started within the first you know, five or six videos, I think. And he lives in a jurisdiction where he can't carry knives that are over three inches. So yeah, this thing's about a little over three and a quarter inches in blade length. So it's well over the three inch number. Let's do the size comparison. Where's my rat one? I carried it yesterday, didn't I? There's my rat one. So it just barely fits on the screen. So yeah, it's almost the size of a rat one. A little bit shorter, but not by an awful lot. I've got a satin finish on this. Like I said, uh, the satin finish uh, is only with this black and blue. The other one's the black wash, which in hindsight, I think I'd prefer for some reason, with my lighting and everything, I, I still haven't come up with a good lighting system. The satin finish sometimes becomes so reflective that I can't get good video of the blade itself. What we've got is a big, chunky thumb riser with a big, blocky chipping on it right there. We've got a swedge that goes all the way along, so we've got a full flat grind there. A nice tip on this blade. With the good grip you can get on this, it punctures quite well. 
Uh, the reverse grip is very comfortable as well with this jimping back here. So you can get a lot of strength uh, with on that. It slices well, it cuts well, it's not too thick behind the grind. Nice blade shape for slicing and cutting and piercing. It's a decent knife. We do have stone wash on the flat. Hearns likes to put their brand name a little bit bigger than I prefer on their knives. So there it is right across the top. And on the other side, we've got this silly font that they use. They use silly fonts quite often on a lot of their knives. And the Maverick is no exception. It looks okay on the word Maverick, but the D2 looks really silly right there. And of course, I'd like all that information to be on the Ricasso here instead of on the bevel. I think with the Harns logo here and the word Harns here on the pocket clip, you know, they don't need to put Harns on the blade. Maybe just their, their H shield logo and put it on the flat right there, nice and small. I'm not too upset with Harns because they come up with some very cool knives. I quite like this knife. Nice big sharpness choil that's fully adequate. We've got a flipper that's back on an angle, and so it works for light switch method very well. And just pushing down on an angle, that works as well. So very, very nice. We've got ball bearings in there. Lockup is very much how I want to see it on a brand new knife, so no problem with that. No blade play side to side, up and down. And we've got a T8 screw here with an anodized, uh, I believe it's steel. Harns likes to use a steel uh, pivot uh, bevel screw. What's the word for that again? Collar, a pivot collar. It's a, it's a beveled pivot collar. And that's quite nice. You see the same pivot collar here with their nice H. I really like that logo right there. We've got a little bit of a cutaway in the liners right here for your thumb to sort of sit in there and offer a little bit more grip. And this chunky blocking is actually effective and it doesn't really get hot in the hand. So not, not a big deal with that, no problem. Back here on the handle, we've got a backspacer. We've got, again, very chunky kind of jimping back there. And same thing on the belly. We've got some chunky jimping here. And at the end of the handle, you can see that there's two screws here. So the pocket clip goes on either side. And I really like this. It's just two screws. It's not two in your face because they've used a unique method. It's not totally unique, but uh, the pocket clip sits down behind the G10 against the liner. So there's a little bit of an opening right there. No big deal. It goes in here and you can get at the screws here. The pocket clip itself is well made. We've got it flat on the top here and good retention. And let's see it go into a pocket. It climbs over every time. Yeah, and it goes all the way in. This time it went all the way in. Let's try it again on a different spot. Went all the way in again. I have one pair of jeans where the denim is just a little bit thicker and so it's folded over and then it's a little too thick. But my average pair of jeans, you know, it just goes in and sinks right down to the bottom. You can see the back of the liners that stick out a little bit. And being all shiny like this, it is a little bit in your face. Some more about the handle, like I was bringing, uh, mentioning before, the liners are exposed at the back. There's your lanyard hole, so that makes it inset, so paracord doesn't bulk up. It's at the very end, which I like. And there's a little bit of jimping back here as well. So, like I said, the reverse grip, your thumb gets extra grip there, and that feels good. And this kind of grip, if you've got really big hands and you end up wanting to do a back grip, an extended grip, like holding it back here, your pinky sits against this jimping here. And that offers just a little bit of grip for your pinky and you can have the knife sticking further out of your hand, which is quite good. I didn't do an awful lot of that, but I tested it this way. It's a little bit not hot on the pinky, but it can get a little bit irritating back there, but it's okay. 
You can also use these exposed liners right here as pressure points. So, you know, maybe you don't need to take the knife all the way out. You just want to put a little pressure on something. You can use that as well. I like the G10. It's 3D milled, as you can tell from the blue and black lines, because they're in flat layers. And it's, it's good looking. I really like the look of this handle. Comfortable in hand. The edges are uh, rounded over all the way around. The lock release, it's not a big cutout, but there's definitely enough cutout. And then with the chamfer on the liner lock, easy to get your thumb in there and disengage that lock every single time. No thinking about it, it just works. Right-handed or left-handed. Left-handed, it's a little trickier. You got to make sure you get your thumb out of the way. But lefties learn how to use, you know, right-handed liner locks all the time. At least most of them do. So quite good, very functional, very useful. Well made, good tolerances. Uh, the liners are very skeletonized. We'll take it apart and show you a little bit later. Like very many liner locks, uh, back in here between the liner lock and the G10, you know, it builds up with gunk. You can see that little bit of gunk there. That's just dead skin. And uh, that's evidence that I have been carrying it and using it and playing with it. I do a lot of tests. Let's go over all those dimensions and things with this tape measure on the screen. So those of you who want to skip past it, when you see this, go away. I don't do chapter markings usually in my videos. Um, I don't think a lot of people skip around, but some people do. So I put this visual on there. It weighs 139 grams. That's 4.85 ounces. The factory sharpness, 130 bess, just slightly better than average. The cutting edge length, 82 millimeters, 3.23 inches. Blade length, tip to the G10 right here, 82.9 millimeters, 3.26 inches. The thickness of the blade at the flats up here, the Ricasso, 3.71 millimeters, 0.146, so well over an eighth of an inch. The blade depth is widest right here, 31.9 millimeters, 1.26 inches. How thick is it behind the grind, especially on this main section where we sharpen? I measured in a couple spots, three spots actually. 0.48 millimeters, 19 thousandths of an inch. And the grind angles. Eh, it wasn't sharpened terribly well. On this side, we're going to say an average of 16 and a half. On this side, an average of 20 and a half. But what it really was, it started at 18.6, went to 20.7, and ended at 22.9, but this side was pretty bad. Right at the very end, it got really steep. So the last eighth of an inch, 22.6, then it went to 21.6, and very shortly, it went to 13.8, and it did that for most of that straight section, went to 14.5, and by the end, it was at 19 degrees. So... Yeah, it wasn't sharpened all that well, but I'll be able to sharpen this on my sharpening rig quite well. Next is the handle. The length of the handle is 118.7 millimeters, 4.67 inches. The grip area, it's around 10 and a half or 4.1 inches. The thickness of the handle, not counting the pocket clip or any screws, just the surfaces of the G10, 15.23, which is 0.6 of an inch. Yeah, it's a little bit thicker than a lot of handles, but I found it very comfortable. In the grip here, where's the widest point? It's right here, 29.1, that's 1.51 inches. No, 1.15 inches. And when the knife is closed, the widest point is right here, 35.8 millimeters, 1.41 inches. And the total length of this knife is 199.9 millimeters. <laughs> so basically 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters, which is 7.87 inches. So it is a little stocky. It's a little bit thick and chunky, kind of like me. I'm not really stocky. I'm just shy of six feet tall, but I am chunky and just not stocky. Uh, this is a great EDC carry. I, I carried this as my primary carry for a while, for a number of days, I think three or four days, and I really enjoyed it. I took it out for all my testing. It's not very hot in the hand. It's comfortable. 
nice edge. You know, it'll sharpen up really well. I've done Harns D2 before. It's it's good. Harns steel has been tested by Lee at Love Them Knives, and it comes back as the steel that they say it is. So I'm quite happy with these Harns knives. If you haven't heard of Harns knives, you need to check them out. I've reviewed most of what they make, so you'll find it down below. They've got big, beasty kind of knives, and then they've got small, more delicate knives and everything in between, but they only have like 20 different models, maybe a bit less than that, actually. So it's a small company that does pretty good and weird stuff like these fonts. Let's take this thing apart and show you the insides. It was a little tricky to take apart, and that's because they used Loctite. Uh, we do have a D-shaped pivot pin, which is common for Harns, so that's not free spinning. You can see the D-shaped hole right there. It's a little bit dirty in there from use. Ceramic detent ball. We've got ceramic ball bearings. You see all the skeletonizing here that helps keep the weight in check. The G10 backspacer goes in right there. So you actually can use it without the G10 backspacer if you want, but only one of these has a shoulder for the liner to sit on. But I've had a lot of knives that have one back screw and the pivot screw, and that's what holds it together. But that is something. But at least there's a nice shoulder on that one. So if you don't want to use the backspacer, that is an option for you. So let's put that in there. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Harns knives sometimes come a little bit dirty, but it did also get dirty from my use. So there's that. There's the uh, pivot collar. It's that anodized steel, as I showed in the most recent uh, Harns video before. The one other thing to talk about is the screws themselves. Even though there is Loctite, you know, the screw heads fit in there very well, but I had to put it on a vise because the screws are floating, free spinning, and so I had to use two screwdrivers to get the, the last screw out. But of course, these screws the, with the D-shape is not free spinning. But one thing about this screw here, the T8 head on there is just barely big enough for my T8 driver. This is just a very cheap T8 driver, uh, but I've got higher end wear a driver and just barely fits in there really snug, but it did fit and I didn't mar up the edge at all. So very nice. For the most part, I like it. Just be prepared for the thread locker, on, especially on the body screws. It took a bit of pressure to break the pivot screw loose. And then when it did, it wasn't a problem. Before I put it together, let me tell you about something I did notice when I had the camera close up. But I'll focus in. There we go. You can see the space right here. There's the G10 screw pushing down. And since there's a space between the liner and the G10, that G10 there is collapsing because they didn't put a spacer in there. That's one thing that the Honey Badger did really well. They have a similar kind of system for the pocket clip, but they add a steel spacer. So if anyone from Hearns is watching, buy yourself a Honey Badger, take a look, close look at what they did. It would be best to put a steel spacer back there so that people don't tighten the screw down too much. And the G10 is uh, breaking beneath it because it was screwed too tight. It went together just fine. Now with my nice light oil in there, it's even smoother. It just comes flying out. And now when I want to close it, it's not, you know, what some people call drop shutty, but it's pretty close. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.